Well, I'm gonna pour the water into here and then drink from here, cause like, I'm not drinking from plastic. <laughs> like a commoner. <laughs> Potters, how are you today? Today we're gonna talk about the hardest of hard for beginners because, well, school just started and I'm guessing a lot of you guys need help pulling. That's right, we're talking about pulling your clay. But I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of an emphasis while I do this. And there's a couple different ways to do this. So we're gonna get our clay, we're gonna go wedge it, and we're gonna see the two different ways that I like to explain how to actually pull your clay. Before you actually start pulling your clay, you need to make sure that your stuff is well centered. So I've already made a video on ways to help you guys center. The link is down below. I will put it there so you can watch it with your potter eyes. Oh, I, I don't I don't consider myself a, a potter yet. Dante, I'm just I'm just someone in class. It's it's too bad. You're a potter now. In my previous videos, I always try to emphasize that there's an action versus reaction, and that's just simply the laws of physics in general, not even pottery. But just to remind you guys, today's emphasis is gonna be on that. That when you actually push something in, that clay is still substance, it's still matter, it still has to go somewhere. And where does it go? If you're squeezing at the bottom, it goes up. If you're squeezing at the top, it might go down. But when you pull, you're always starting at the bottom of your clay body, which means of course you're gonna have to pull it up, which of course means the clay is gonna go upwards, making your cylinder taller. You're not really pulling, you're really just squeezing the clay body so that it goes up here. Look at this little piece of clay right here. It's only this tall, but if I squeeze right here, it's going to move upwards. That's exactly what you're doing when you're actually pulling. You're not really pulling, you're just squeezing so the clay moves upwards. The trick with pulling is that you have to make sure it makes at least one full rotation before you decide to move your hands upwards. And once you have your hand positioning down, it's actually really easy. But Dante, everybody calls it pulling. It's not actually pulling, that's just the term we use to call it when you pull clay upwards and when you're squeezing clay so it has to move somewhere else. These are some really big balls of clay. You're probably not using balls this big. Yeah. <laughs> But I will say it almost doesn't matter unless you're using something extremely, extremely small. At the point at which you're using a ball of clay this big, the same rules apply to a big piece of clay as do the small ones. The only difference is the bigger you get, the harder you're going to have to pull to pull more clay up because there's more clay to pull upwards. Call this centered right here and there's a couple different ways you can actually start to make the hole in which you can pull from inside of your clay body after this I was always taught to put my hands together and my middle finger dig inwards really slightly and once I reach almost to the bottom and I usually leave about enough space to stop but maybe a quarter of an inch to an inch off I would start to pull my fingers backwards and make kind of a little gully for myself so that it won't take up so much space and I have a lot more clay. That being said, the way I was taught is not the way I do it anymore. So I'm gonna show you the way I do it and then the next time round, I'm gonna show you the way I was taught to do it. I usually get my fingers, cross them like this and just dig right into the middle, right, with my two fingers. I found this way out by accident when I got really frustrated and I like this a lot better because it pulls off a little bit of the excess clay that you don't need then you can just put it into your other clay pile. Of course, once you get all the way down to the bottom, maybe about right here, not extremely bottom, but about a half an inch to an inch off, I'll start pulling this way, which will make a little tiny gullet at the very bottom. Keep in mind that if you get right here and this doesn't fit, you're gonna have to put your entire hand in, which means you're gonna have to wet this hand to make sure that there's not too much friction. So once you get here, just start pulling and crumpling your hand this way. Don't actually pull, really just move your fingers very strongly towards yourself. I'm gonna let you look inside so you can see what I'm talking about. This is where we're at right now. At the moment, I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna pull towards myself. And you see the hole getting bigger, right? You'll notice that this wall here isn't the same length as this wall here. I still have a little bit of room. I still have a little bit of room to move my fingers. But the point is, I really want this bottom part to be crunkled inwards, way over here. As for this top part, it's still right here. Now here's the difficult part. You want to take your fingers, and the way I was taught was to put them like this, because I want the clay to ride along these two even fingers right here. Which means, 
that if one finger is longer than the other, you might have to put it in. Pretend you lack a despacio meatball. After that, I would get my sponge and do the same exact hand movement. There's a couple different things that beginners usually have problems with when they're pulling. Number one, you need to push down here really hard, right, to make this tiny little caterpillar right here. This is the wedge of clay that you're going to be pulling upwards, and this is part of the reason I told you to make this little gully down in here so that you can actually put your fingers in here to pull it upwards. But you did notice that when I pushed this in, the clay moved upwards and made a little bump right here. That means the clay is moving upwards. Your job is to make sure there's one full rotation before you move your hands upwards again. And I see a lot of beginners that like to move their hands up and down. You don't really have to. As long as you have the right pulling technique and the right position, you can really just move your elbows upwards and that'll do the trick just fine. That way you don't have to stabilize your hands the entire time. You can leave your hands in one solid position and just pull like this. Notice I'm not moving my hands so much as I'm moving my elbows which are attached to my hands. And that's the difference in between this and this. So my fingers are here, I've applied pressure, I put it down here. Now notice one special thing. This spot right here is one rotation. I am not allowed to move my hand upwards until I've made one full rotation. That means my hands cannot actually move up until I make one rotation at this single mark right here. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna push in with even pressure, right? I can't actually have one hand pushing harder than the other one because then I'm gonna throw it off center. And I really just wanna pinch the clay and move my elbows upwards at the same time. Notice how I'm moving at a very steady pace. If I move too fast, I'm gonna make little wrinkles and mess this up. See that? And when I get to the very top, don't push as hard. Just release very slowly, release pressure. The top is one of the more sensitive parts. When you get to the top, you really don't have to be pulling or pushing as hard as you would at the bottom. Bonus tip! It's a good idea to choke your clay inwards before you do the next pull if your flange is coming out a little too high. So if you're in a V-shape and you really want it to be more in a cylinder shape, you're gonna wanna pull that inwards. So the next pull is a lot easier for you. In this one, I'm gonna do it without the sponge so that you guys can actually see what my fingers are doing while I'm pulling upwards. Some people use their knuckles, some people use the size of their fingers, some people use the size of their hand, in, in fact, and some people use their entire hand when they pull. But either way, as long as it works for you, it's the correct way to do it. You wanna make sure the inside and the outside of your clay are well lubricated whenever you pull. As a trick for this, I'll usually put my hand down the side and then sprinkle water on my hand and move it down the entire clay body. That wets the entire thing instead of just the top and me pouring water on. And if you're being really, really careful, you'll put your hand like this and sprinkle it right down your hand so that way it flows down your fingers and you get two different angles of water so that way you wet your inside and your outside. Now I'm gonna do this one more time in slow-mo so you can actually see what's going on. So you can actually understand what's happening to the clay as I'm pulling. And I'm gonna straighten out the cylinder so that you guys can actually see the difference in between the texture of my fingers and the texture of the clay before I actually touch it. Have to remember though that I'm pushing from the inside with my other hand as well. I'm not just pushing from the outside, my fingers are pushing from the inside and the outside with the same exact stuff. The only difference is instead of my fingers being like this on the outside, it's like this on the inside so that all the clay pushes right up against my finger right here. You probably noticed that when I was done pulling, my hand was like this on the inside of the clay, right? I'm either pushing up against this finger 
or against these fingers on the inside of the clay. You can't just put your hand on the outside and expect to pull up and just leave your hand in there. That's not the way it works. My hand's in there for a reason. I'm pushing the clay in between my fingers to move it upwards. That's why it's called pulling. And I know I explained this earlier, but when you have a ball of clay, or anything that's malleable for that matter, and you push inwards, it's gonna have to move somewhere. It has to move upwards. It has to expand outwards. It has to go somewhere. We're just lucky enough to have a will to where we're gonna probably push it upwards, right? So as long as I'm putting enough pressure on a constant basis in between two different platforms with something that's malleable like this, it's essentially going to move upwards. Well, I'm not gonna waste clay, so I'm gonna finish making this into something. Then we're gonna do one more pull demo just so you guys can really grasp what's going on. This time around, I really want you guys to pay attention to my hand position and the amount of pressure I'm putting on some stuff. I'm gonna slow this down so you can actually see what's going on as far as the action and reaction towards my clay body, but I still want you to really pay attention to what's going on with my hands, where I'm positioning them, whether I'm moving my hands or my elbows, where my chest is, how close I am to the wheel, etc, etc. Because these little tiny things are what really make a difference in between someone who can pull and can center and someone who can't. Because to the common observer, they look like they're doing the same exact thing. I'm not just gonna waste the clay, of course I made something out of it. Like, well that's about all the time I have today. I really hope that helped some of you new potters out there because I know that school just started and all of a sudden my numbers skyrocket whenever school starts because people are sharing videos, people are like, oh my god, I found out how to center from this one weirdo on YouTube. I don't know what the fuck this is. But well, thank you guys very much for watching. I really hope that helped you new potters become better potters and really understand the difference in between what pulling is and what actually moving your clay upwards is because it's not really pulling. You're just moving your hands upwards while the clay scrunches itself because of physics. I just wanted to make that definition clear because while we call it pulling as potters, it's really not pu pulling. It's like when you say you're gonna take a whiz. You're not taking a whiz. You're not doing it R. Kelly style. You're, you're giving a whiz. You're, you're whizzing. And I think that definition confuses a lot of new potters because it's a new world for you guys. So anything we tell you, you take it as definitionary truth. 
I was like, oh, you must be actually pulling. I wouldn't make such a big deal about it if I didn't meet almost like 60% of new beginners are like, I don't understand why you guys call it pulling when it's not really, it's not really pulling. Well, thank you guys very much for watching. I really hope that helps you on your way to becoming a better potter, especially if you're new. By the way, welcome to the channel. You look nice today. If you want to see some of my artwork or even talk to me, the links are down below for my Instagram and my Facebook fan page. I love you, dirty potter faces, and I will see you next Thursday. This cup has had nothing in it the whole time. Then how am I making slurpy sounds? It's a mystery.